This video will teach you how to make a knitted newborn wrap for newborn photography such as this. So a newborn swaddle in that nice knitted texture for newborn photography. The materials you'll need are a Centro knitting machine, one or two skeins of yarn. I'll get more into the types of yarn and thicknesses of yarn in just a little bit. Two chip clips. Two pieces of waste yarn. These will not be in your final product, um, so you can really use anything. The central machine comes with really cheap yarn, so you could use that. That's what this is. And I always like to use a color that's completely different from my project so I can really see the difference of where the waste yarn stops and where the project starts. You might need scissors and you will need a crochet hook of some type to finish your project. This is just kind of a mid-size five millimeter, um, so it doesn't really matter as long as it's not too small and it's not too big. So I'm gonna turn you around so you can see, from my point of view, making the wrap. Okay, so on the Centro machine, there is a little switch here on the side and one letter is a P for panel and there's a T for a tubular. We are just making a panel today. We're not going all the way around the circle to make a tube, so you want your switch to be on the P. And there is also um, this little tension hook. Mine is broken. So there used to be a full circle here and it had a little hole in the middle to keep your yarn. Um, if you have yours on there, you can use that absolutely, but it's not a deal breaker if yours is gone like mine. And on your machine, there's a crank here on the side. It can go either direction and it stops when it gets to this white hook. I cannot go past it. The machine, when it's in panel mode, will not let me go beyond that white hook. And as you turn it, if you can see, the hooks will shoot up. So this is an important part of it but also in between so like these two hooks are up right now there's a little piece in between right here that's also really important for your project so um, you'll notice like when I put the yarn on and when I keep going back and forth it's really important that your yarn catches underneath this piece when you get to your final one and I'll show you that as soon as we get there so to start you're going to need one of your colors of scrap yarn, the one that is not going to matter. And we're going to cast on. Now, I'm doing this backwards, <laughs> upside down, so that I can show you. So hopefully I can do this. Actually, this is how you cast on. Okay, so you put, you leave a little tail in the middle, and you go under your white hook. Now I'm going to turn the wheel and I'm gonna, on the next hook, I'm not gonna go under the hook, I'm gonna go behind in the back part of the hook. And then on the next hook, I'm going to put it under the hook and then the next hook is going to be in the back of the hook. So that's gonna be the pattern that you do to get your yarn on the machine. You're going to go in front of the hook and then in back in front and back and you're going to continue that pattern. I'll keep doing that slowly so you can see. So here's my one in front, in back, in front, in back, front, back, front, back, front, and I'm just holding this, the rest of the yarn that's in a pool down here on the ground. I'm just holding it with one hand and my other hand is turning the wheel. So right now this is a front part of the hook. The next one will be behind it. 
in front, behind, and I'm gonna pause really quick. So it's hard to see in the video, but your machine, if you look closely next to each hook, there's a number. And when I make a newborn wrap, I try to shoot for about 30 when I am making, when I'm casting on my stitches. I try to keep going until I hit around the 30 um, stitch mark because I don't care about having a wide wrap necessarily. I'd rather have a narrow one and go around the newborn multiple times. So I'd rather have a thin, long wrap than have a wide, shorter wrap. So right now my next hook that I would go under is 16. So here's 16 in front, 17 behind, 18 in front, 19 behind. 20 in front, 21 behind, 22 in front, 23 behind, 24 in front, 25 behind, 26 in front, 27 behind, 28 in front, 29 behind, 20 or 30, excuse me, in front. Now, Here's kind of my goal, but, so I just finished hook number 30 in front. Now, I instead of putting my yarn right after, if I put my yarn into the slot right after 30, it comes loose right here. So before I put it into the slot, you need to go under this little middle piece that I was talking about earlier, in between these two hooks, there's that middle piece. I need to tuck it under there. So right now, here's the yarn. I'm gonna tuck it under there and then put it in the yarn slot, like that. And at this point, if you still have your tension clip attached to your machine, that's where you can put it in there. I do not have it, so I'm just gonna use my hand. All right, I'm gonna come back around here to my correct side and I'm gonna hold it tautly right here, and I'm going to start spinning my machine back to the way I came. I no longer have to weave it in and out. The machine is now doing that for me because the yarn is on there. So I'm gonna go all the way back towards the white hook, and that's where it, the machine no longer lets me go past that. So I'm going to hold tightly here, not super tight, just a nice firm grasp on it, and I'm going to start going back in the other direction. Keep Keeping a nice, again, if you have the tension clip, it'll do it for you. If not, I'm just holding it with my hand nice and, and firm so that it doesn't buckle. And I'm going back now the other direction, so turn your handle in the other direction. And your machine is going to drop about the first three stitches over here, and that's okay. It's going to happen. And I'm going to go back the other direction. All the way until I get to that 30th hook. And you're going to be able to see that because the yarn is already on there. It's not like I have to count again. The yarn is attached to hook number 30. So there's 30 right there. And the, like I said, the gray yarn's already there. So I'm going to pull, and it's almost like it's gonna go onto the next couple of hooks, but it won't. Because all I want it to do is to catch this one, and then I'm going to start going, it's under the foot, and I'm gonna go start going back in the opposite direction. And like that. And I go all the way back until, you can go all the way back to your white hook if you want, but you're gonna start noticing those missed stitches and that's not a big deal. And then I'm gonna start going back in the opposite direction. And it's really just a matter of turning it back and forth, back and forth. And remember, this is just your scrap yarn. So this really doesn't matter what it looks like. As long as you get a nice amount of stitches on there. So 
So I can already tell that this is, these hooks were dropped and this is where my project actually starts. So I just keep a hold on it and I sort of return back to, I don't even have to go all the way to the white hook because I know this is actually the one where my project starts. So I can stop here if I want and then start cranking in the opposite direction. Again, I can tell that this hook is where my project ends. So I'm going to go just past it. It went under that little foot right past the hook and then I'm gonna go back the other direction. So again, go back towards the white hook. You don't have to go all the way there because it dropped your first couple of stitches as long as it goes under the foot right below and this happens to be number three, I believe. And back the opposite direction. All right, I'm almost out of scrap yarn, which is not a big deal because I have a, a decent amount of rows and I can start my actual project. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go to that final hook, make sure it catches after that last hook, hook number 29 it looks like. I'm gonna go under that little foot after 29 and I'm gonna stop. So it looks like I'm about to go on to hook number 30, but I'm not. I am going to put it in the middle of the machine. I'm just gonna drop it in the center, okay? And then, this is when you get to use your actual yarn. Um, today I am using Yarn B Alpaca Twist. I like to pick a yarn that is, it can't be super thick. This machine cannot handle super thick yarn. I also don't wanna pick anything very thin either. If you pick something thin, this is about as thin as I would go, this navy one here, because as you pull it, this machine does not stitch very tightly. So as you can see, when I wrap this around a baby, you can see right through it. So I don't like to pick any yarn that's super thin Otherwise, it'll look cheap and really loosely knit. And then you can't pick a too thick yarn because this machine cannot handle it. This is about as frayed as you can pick too. Be careful of how much um, fray there is on your yarn because it kind of gets stuck in your machine. So um, this is a nice mid-weight yarn. It has a little bit of fray on it, but I think it'll work. So this is the yarn I'll be using today for my project. So when you're ready to start with your actual color for your project, you have to um, unwind your yarn from the skein. If you try to leave it like this and knit with it in the tight skein like this, you'll get way too much tension in your machine and you'll have so many problems. So I like to unwrap it about 10 times and leave that pool next to me and then leave the rest of the skein over to the side. That way I know that I can knit a few rows, make sure that the pool that I have gathered here is not going to get knots in it um, and get all tangled up. So it gives me just a little bit to work with at a time and then I unwrap some more and I continue that process all the way through my project. So to get started on your actual color, you're gonna need to leave a bigger piece this time because you're going to have to end up crocheting that into your project. So I would say you need to leave, that would probably be about one foot, two feet, to be on the safe side, maybe three feet of yarn. So I'm gonna leave about three feet in the center of my central machine. Then you go ahead and you put the yarn into the slot wherever you left off. You don't have to cast off again, uh, cast on again, excuse me. You just have to continue the machine back and forth and it's gonna, it's not gonna know the difference of where your waste yarn or your scrap yarn ends and when your project begins. We're going to do that manually, crocheting it together at the end. Okay, so I've got my project yarn in the machine, in the slot. I'm going to unwrap in my lap 
some of my yarn. I'm doing that right now. Okay, so I unwrapped it about 10 times. I've got that pulled in my lap. So now I'm just gonna keep going. I need to go back in this direction, back towards my white hook. I see the white hook all the way on the other side. So I'm gonna go back in the opposite direction and it's just gonna add the green onto the gray. And here's my last gray one. I see it right here. So I'm gonna go like one hook past. I'm gonna make it go down that foot. I heard it, I, I pull it nice and tight when it gets towards the end. That's the key is that when you get towards the end, you wanna pull that nice and tight. And then you can let go a little bit of the tension and I'm gonna go back the other direction because the green is now in the same hook, hook number one, two, three, as the gray scrap yarn. I'm gonna go back the other direction now. And I'll show you catching the foot on that side on the other end here in just a second. Okay, I'm getting close to the end. I see that the gray yarn's last hook is right here. I'm hooking it there. It looks like I'm going to the next one. I'm gonna give it a nice tug. It's clicked right underneath that foot. Now I can go back the other direction. That's what I mean, the foot is almost more important than the hook because it has to go under there. Otherwise you're gonna start missing stitches on the end and it's gonna unravel. You're gonna start all over. Okay, here I am getting to the end. Again, I, I can see where my project ends is this hook, but the, next, the foot next to it is more important. So I go there, it's like I'm going to another hook beyond it, but I'm not, I'm just gonna click it under that foot and then I go back. So it's almost like two hooks that it looks like I'm gonna keep knitting, but I'm not. I'm just getting it secured underneath that foot and then going back the opposite direction. I'll show you again. Back the opposite direction. I can see that this is the last hook that I need. So it looks like I'm going beyond it. One hook, two hooks, pull tight, and then back the other direction because I saw it catch under that foot when I pulled it tight and then back the other direction. There's the final project right there. One hook, two hook, pull tight. Got it under that foot and back the other direction. I need to pull some more yarn, give me just a second. Okay, and I continue going in that direction. Keep cranking it, keep cranking it. Here's the hook of where my project ends. One hook, two hook, give this a nice tug. It went under the foot. Now I can go back the other direction. Here's my last hook of my project. One hook, two hooks, pull tight. It went under that foot. Now I can go back. Okay, here's the hook right here. This is where my project ends. One, two, pull tight. It clicked under that foot. Now I'm going to go back. Okay, so about right here is where I need to show you why we have chip clips. If you do not put some weight on the ends of your projects, they're gonna start getting caught in these hooks. So that's where the chip clips come in. They provide just enough weight to keep it from getting stuck in the hooks. Then you're gonna have missed stitches and holes. And for me, I just have to start all over if that ever happens. I don't know, really know how to fix that. So to prevent that from happening, put a chip clip on your project on one side and do the same thing on the opposite side. And every once in a while, just keep moving your, I would say after, I don't know, maybe five or six rows, just move your chip clips up a little bit more just to keep that weight pulling down off of your hooks. All right, I'm gonna do a few more rows and then I'm gonna turn off the recording and get you back up to speed towards the end of, of the project. All right, so let's go back the other way. And 
and here's my last hook. One hook beyond, two, pull tight. It went under the foot, I saw it, so I'm gonna go back the other direction. Here's the final hook of my project. One, two, beyond. It's about to slip over the foot, I see it. So I just pulled it a little tight, it did. Now I can go back the other direction, keeping tension here on the yarn that's being fed into the machine. And kind of check in on this yarn every once in a while. I've accidentally had it slip out of this little slot before and then all my yarn came off the machine. So just every once in a while, check in with this, make sure it's still in the slot. If you pull down on it here or you have your tension clip, that's gonna help as well. <clears throat> okay, here's my last hook for my project, right here, the one that's up. One, two, about two, it already went under that foot so I can go back. Okay, and I have to loosen up some more yarn. Again, if you, you'll feel it get a lot of tension if you don't have some yarn unwound from your skein. There's the last one. One, two. Feel it underneath the next foot and then back the way you came. Okay, I'm towards the end. That's the last hook right there, the one that's sticking up. Another one stick up, another one, pull tight. That gets me under the foot so I can go backwards now. And you'll get faster. I mean, at first it took me a long time to make one of these, but now I'm at the point where I can finish an entire wrap in like, a 30 or one 30 minute or one hour TV show. I'll just have that on the background and be doing this at the same time. Okay, just a couple more rows to show you and then I will catch you back up towards the end of the project. Okay. There's the final hook of where my project is. One more, two more, pull tight. It's under the foot, so now I can go back. Final hook of the project, one, two, pull tight. It's under the foot, I just saw it, and go back. And now you can see the chip clips have come pretty far down, so I need to stop and readjust those. Push them up closer to where the hooks of the machine are. <clears throat> and wrap some more. Last hook, one, two, pull tight, back the other way. Last hook, one, to pull tight, it went under and back. Okay, so keep going with this same process <clears throat> and finish your entire skein of yarn until you reach about, again, about three feet from the end of your skein. Um, if you're nervous that you're cutting it close, you can stop it a little beforehand, but make sure you have a nice tail. Don't keep knitting until you're completely in your skein of yarn is completely out. Make sure you have a good three foot tail at the other end. I'll see you back here in just a little bit. Okay, I'm getting really close to the end of my skein of yarn. This is all I have left. I've been cranking away for probably, I don't know, 20 minutes, but it definitely took me longer than that when I first started. So I just wanted to show you, like see how my chip clip is pretty far down my project, that's when I stop and I move my chip clips up towards the top where the hooks are. All right, so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna have a few more cranks and then I'll show you how to 
end your project. Whoops. Okay, so another thing I wanted to mention when you're choosing your yarn, obviously so many yarns in the craft stores are made with acrylic or partially made with acrylic. I would just hold the yarn up to the light in the craft store and if it shows up shiny, you're probably not going to want to buy that yarn. It will show up shiny in your photos and that's just not something that I like. Um, if you like it, go for it. But I prefer to have something more natural looking. So like when you look at this and I hold it up to the light, I'm not seeing a sheen on that yarn. And all, by the way, all my project that I've done, I just keep pushing it down there in the middle. And when I buy yarn, I make sure it's not a super tiny skein. If it is, you're gonna have to do multiple of the skeins of yarn for one wrap. I prefer to get a more medium to large size skein of yarn and that way I only have to do one. Um, and then also when I buy it, I buy two skeins so that way I can make a matching bonnet always. If I really like it and I think it's great for boys as well, the color, I might buy three skeins and do the third skein I can make a sleepy hat. So um, those take a little bit longer to knit and I can show you how to do that in another video sometime. Um, I probably don't do it technically correct, but it works for photos. So um, I, I like to have coordinating sets and coordinating pieces with my photos, so that's why I usually buy two to three when I find a color of yarn that I like. And hang on, I have a little bit of a hiccup here in my yarn. There we go, a little tangle. All right, so I'm checking to see how much I have left. I still have quite a bit, so I think I'm gonna do one or two more rows. And I'm gonna move my chip clips up while I'm thinking about it because I still have to do one more color of scrap yarn. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop just to be on the safe side. So I, I know I have about three feet of yarn, but if I did another row, I'm afraid I wouldn't have quite enough. So here's my yarn. Here's what I'm left with. I'm gonna take it out of the slot and just rest it in the center. I know that seems weird, but it's going to work. And then I take my second color of scrap and I unwind it. I leave that you do not have to leave a long tail of this because again, you're not using this in your project. You just need to leave maybe six inches to six to 12 inches, I would say. Put that in the, the yarn slot and then crank back exactly like you just did with your project. I like to get, I don't know, at least six rows of this the scrap yarn. You can do more if you'd like, but I would say at least six. Okay, here I am at that last hook of my project, making sure it goes under the next foot. Remember the foot is in between the hooks and then go back the other way. I see. And you can take this all the way back to the white hook if you want, because again, this is your scrap yarn. It's not going to be in your project. It's just to make a nice finished edge. If you do not use scrap yarn, I guarantee you, and if you just do it the way the machine instructions come, your project, your wrap will curl at the ends and it will look loose and pretty unfinished. I do not like it, I've done it before. I did it the first time I tried making one of these wraps and I did not like the finish. It just curled and was loose and it looked terrible and even in photos, which, you know, I edit photos with Photoshop and everything else, but I, I didn't like it at all. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna go back to the white hook and I'm gonna be finished. So here's how I take my project off. 
you just take your yarn out of the slot and hold it and you crank forwards and backwards a few times until everything comes off. I have one more back there I need to try to get off of there and everything's off. Okay, so I'm going to show you now how to get rid of the scrap yarn because obviously you do not want that in your wrap in your photos. Okay, so to finish off the edges of your newborn wrap, this was my first scrap yarn color and then here's my project. Now I'm going to show you both sides so you, hopefully you can see. So this side looks more like the traditional knit that you would see if you learned how to, whoops, sorry, um, hand knit. This side looks more like waves or like straight across. This is the side I want to crochet. Crochet. It's just easier for me to see it, so that's the side I use. So here's my project yarn. I am going to just put it around my crochet hook. Hopefully you know the basics of crocheting. Um, I don't know a lot about crocheting. I literally just know how to make a big old chain. So um, I'll try my best to explain as I go. Okay, so I can see the first green wave is right here. But before it, I see like almost a knot. So I'm going to go under that just to be on the safe side. I might, um, so I don't lose anything. So here's the first wave. But here's where I see like the scrap yarn being really loose. So I'm going to go right there. All right, I'm going to wrap my project around and make one crochet loop. So there's like a slip knot now, right there. And then I'm gonna go under that first where I see like that first wave across. And now I have like two things on my uh, crochet hook. Take the yarn, wrap it around, pull that yarn through the two loops I just made. Okay, I've got one on there already. Now I'm gonna go to the second wave. I already have my hook through this one. So I'm gonna go to the second little wave, put my hook through, yarn around, pull that working yarn through those two loops. I've got now one on my crochet needle, on my crochet hook. Looking at the project. I see between the gray yarn and my green yarn. Here's the next like straight across wave. Hook under there, yarn around, pull through. And I'm gonna just keep doing that all the way across. I have one already on my hook, under, around, pull through. One on there, next wave, all the way at the very top, pull it through. The very top I see it the next one right here around pull through this is also the benefit of not having a super thin yarn is that you can see every single one it's not super slippery or silky or anything like that a nice mid-weight yarn that's kind of wooly in texture um, will make sure that the crochet finish is pretty easy to do now this one does have some like I don't know, almost like frizz on it. And that makes it a little trickier, but it's not too bad. I can still see, clearly see the difference of where the, the scrap yarn ends and where my project begins. So again, there should be about 30 because that's how many we did on the machine. I'm not counting because I can clearly see where the next one is. I've already got my hook under this one. I can see that one next. Around and through. Under, so I have two on my hook, working yarn around, pulling it through with the hook. Next one, two loops on, working yarn around, pull it through both of those loops. Okay. there 
and I have messed this up before. To be really honest, I finished it, I took my scrap yarn out, and then I realized, oh gosh, I missed some stitches. So I kind of, for the time being, I needed that wrap to use for a session, so I just kind of like crocheted it together to make it work, but I really need to redo that yarn because it up close it doesn't look good. But again, if you're just using this for photography and you use Photoshop and you can clone some places if you mess some stitches up, like it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just for a photo. It's not like nobody's, I don't think anybody's gonna take it with a magnifying glass and dissect your work. So, okay, I see, I'm almost there, I'm almost to the end. There's my loop, pull my working yarn through. Now I can see I'm at the end because the next wave is at the very end of the project. So I'm gonna put it through there. Oops, I got a little bit of the scrap yarn, so I gotta pull that off. I don't want that. My working yarn around and through. Okay, so just to make it nice and secure, I'm at the end, that was the last one. But to make it nice and secure, the next part like goes down the side. That was the part that was at the very end when you were cranking your central machine back and forth. It was like the very end hooks that you did. So just to make sure this is nice and snug, I'm gonna go through one of those. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna go through the, the top one that I see. It's almost like, you know, the project going down now. And this is just gonna give it a nice secure finish. And I'm gonna finish it with one, there's that. Now I'm gonna take my crochet hook out. Right now it's a slip knot. I can pull this and my working yarn gets shorter and longer. So I'm going to wrap my working yarn around, pull it through the slip knot, and pull tight. And that gives me a knot at the end of my project. Now I do have a little bit of yarn left. I'm just gonna cut that off. But to show you how to get rid of it, you go to your scrap yarn and you just pull it out. Sometimes it's a little tricky. Sometimes you have to kind of, this is honestly sometimes the most time consuming part because you have to, I mean, if you don't care about it and you're gonna use different scrap yarn all the time, just cut it off. But I use the same scrap yarn over and over and over. So um, I pull mine out. Once you get this first row out, it should be a lot easier. So let me see if I can show you. And then you just do the same thing to the other side and your wrap is finished. And when I photograph with these knitted wraps, I try to put a um, fabric wrap underneath that's close to the color. That way, um, you know, if it's not a super long wrap, um, you still have a similar color underneath for those open knitted holes. but I use pretty common colors. I use a lot of neutrals, a lot of earth tones. So finding a uh, stretchy knit fabric at the fabric stores, because I actually just do that myself too. I don't even buy wraps from online vendors. I uh, just go to the fabric store and get like jersey knit and I just, cut my own wraps as well. So it's easy for me to get a yarn and think about if I already have a jersey knit that that's that is the similar color or if I need to go buy some. But again, I like everything to coordinate. So I want like a knitted wrap and I want the same color in a jersey stretch and I want the same color for um, the background. So the same jersey knit for, um, I use a dog bed for my poses so I want to have you know a couple of yards of that as well for the dog bed so everything I like to have coordinate okay so I got one row out it's getting knotted up a little bit in there but as you can see I'm just threading through where the end of the yarn is and just pulling it out all right so I will finish this and I will show you the other side Okay, so here's my final bit to pull through. And I pulled all the scrap yarn out. And now it has a nice finished 
edge. I would photograph this side for sure because it looks more like that V um, knit that, like I said, is more hand knitted looking. All right, so now it's time to do the same thing to the other side. Again, don't use the V texture though for the finishing edge because it's just so much easier to see on the wavy side. All right, so here is my working yarn of my wrap. I'm going to, not the tail, but just before the tail, I'm gonna go ahead and make a stitch, a crocheted stitch, just to make sure it's nice and knotted at the end. Okay, and I can see my first wave right here under it, working yarn around, pull the working yarn through both loops, whoops. There we go. That was a little tight, sorry. All right, I can see the next wave is right here, under it, working yarn around, pull it through both hoops, loops, excuse me. Next one, around, Pull through, that did not go well, let's try that again. There we go. All right, one loop is already on the crochet hook. Next straight line between the, don't grab the pink, just the green, My in my case the green. Under that, there's two loops on the crochet hook around and only pull the working yarn through both of those loops. All right, so I'm gonna keep going across and then similar to the other side, at the very end, I do an extra um, stitch along the edge just to make sure it's nice and secure and then a knot in within the slip knot at the very end. So it's like almost double knotted there at the end between making a stitch on the side and also tying a knot to finish off your yarn. Okay, I'm at the end. There are no more waves here. So this is what I was talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and go through the side of my wrap just to make sure I get it nice and secure and closed off and it's not going to come unraveled. There's my one on the side. Take my crochet hook out and open up the loop and make a knot to get it nice and secure. And here's my wrap completely finished. So both edges are nicely crocheted. They almost look like a little braid on the end. There's one. And there's the other. This wrap probably ended up being, gosh, I don't know, maybe two and a half feet long, but I'll try to show you with my legs since I don't have a baby right here. Um, but you can see like once you wrap it, you can, you'll have to spread it out. It does curl a bit on the ends. And then you can wrap it around again. I can definitely get this around a baby two or three times when they're all nicely wrapped up. So, so here's the finished product. And as I said before, I always buy a second skein in the same color. This will easily make one um, bonnet, newborn bonnet. I could also make a second newborn bonnet with a different pattern or I could make a sitter bonnet a little bit bigger for um, maybe a six month old or nine month old. So I will show you in another video how to make that. I happen to also with this, I found this really pretty pattern and I went ahead and bought this as well. So I could either make um, a bonnet in this kind of pretty multicolored yarn that has that same green color in it or I can make a wrap in this and do um, a wrap in this and then the plain green bonnet so whatever you whatever you like if you like to have a patterned wrap or if you like to have a patterned bonnet um, 
or both. Buy two skeins of yarn and make sure you have enough to do a wrap and a bonnet. It's up to you. The possibilities are endless and that's what's so awesome about this is, you know, this yarn was $5.99 and this one was, the green yarn was $4.29 at Hobby Lobby. So I also buy them on sale. So they were either 30 or 40% off. So for less than $5, I made this wrap and yes the central machine initially you'll have to um, buy that but once you have it you can make so many wraps on it. I will do another video on how to make a coordinating bonnet.